so it begins. An epic story of mankind, inspired by real events. Are you ready? And bring restitution and relief. In every dimension, but I am sustaining restitution and relief, uh, and, and there'll be a case. Praise the Lord. Uh, greetings to you in the precious name of Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Hamashiach, our Savior and our Lord. Uh, I am extremely excited to be joining you this evening, and so. Um, we at Grace Church are in a great time of celebration and we are just delighted that the Father would allow us to be connected. Uh, my name is Walter Turner. I'm the senior pastor at Grace Congregational Church um, and we want to welcome you and thank you for sharing with us. We'd like to hear from you. Please contact us. Please let us know that you're viewing. Um, we are praying for you. Uh, we have intercessors who are praying on your behalf in order that the will of the Father would be done in your lives. Um, we'd love to know that you are being helped, that you are being strengthened, you are being edified. We're also praying for those of you who have not made a serious decision about your relationship with God and embrace the Lord Jesus Christ and the scriptures and those things that pertain to eternal life through him. We're praying that somehow through this broadcast and what you view and hear here will be the catalyst to um, your salvation, your restoration uh, with your Heavenly Father. And so we're praying for you. We're looking forward. We're believing God and knowing that God is honoring uh, His Word and our requests. Again, we want to thank you because we're in a great time of celebration uh, we're honoring the Lord by obedience to the scriptures in which we are, uh, are admonished to keep the feast of the Lord, to celebrate those things, those holy days, those convocations that the Father has set aside that directly relate to our salvation and our relationship with him, uh, keep us mindful of the wonderful things that he has done and serve as encouragement and strength as we move along this path of salvation. So we're ready and getting ready to celebrate the Passover. Um, if you viewed some of our previous telecasts, we've taken the time to uh, explain, to share, and to try to show from scripture the, the validity of the Passover even today for those of us who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ those who accept God's word as being still valid in the year uh, 2018. And so as a result of that, we are preparing ourselves on tomorrow night, uh, March the 30th, Friday night, uh, 2018. We will be there at Grace Congregational Church. We will be uh, commemorating the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the night that he was betrayed, the Passover, on which he was crucified. Um, and so we're going to begin with foot washing, um, which will take place from 6.30 to about 7.15. And then from there, we will move over into the uh, sanctuary. We, foot washing will be done in the fellowship hall. And so if you'll just come on in, we'll direct you. And then uh, we'll come back over to the sanctuary at 7.30. And we'll begin a time of worship and reflection and gratitude and thankfulness uh, and the sacraments, the communion, um, to honor what God has done through Jesus the Christ. Uh, won't be there long. It's not a long, drawn-out process. It is something uh, that we come, we do, and we're mindful. And we go and we reflect on it in our hearts, and, and we're ready. If you understand and follow the scriptures um, when they were keeping the Passover in Egypt God told them um, don't make this no long drawn out thing be ready to go because the next day uh, that first day of the unleavened bread was when they made their exodus and they were ready to leave they were preparing to leave and so I uh, want to remind you that 
we will be celebrating the Passover that night, and then that next morning we'll be back in a time of praise and worship, honoring the weekly Sabbath. Uh, and then that Saturday night, we will be there to kick off uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And so we're going to look forward to having a great time. The scripture admonishes us that the first and the seventh day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread are uh, convocations. So we will be there at the, at the temple. Uh, and the good thing is this year, they, they, they both are weekly Sabbaths, so we're already there. But we're going to have a couple of other services through the week. Uh, on Tuesday night, April the 3rd, we'll be there at 7.30 for a time of praise and worship and celebration. These are feasts. These are glad times. And when we look back and understand what God has done for us and what these feasts of the Lord symbolize, then they really are times of great rejoicing and praise and celebration. And we determined uh, to make them just that. So we'll be there Tuesday night. Uh, 7.30 again on Thursday night, um, April the 5th at 7.30. Um, we'll be there in a time of praise and worship and just celebrating the Lord and just honoring what God has done for us. Um, let me back up just a little bit. That, that Sabbath morning uh, after that Friday night when we take communion, that Sabbath morning when we come in, uh, we're going to have a great time of our music department will be just celebrating, singing the, the glorious, wondrous praises of our God. Um, there'll be some exhortation, some prayer, just a great time. You don't want to miss it. Uh, we certainly want you to come out and to be a part of it. Uh, it is for God's people. These were ordained, these were ordained by God for his people and to keep us mindful of the wonderful work um, that he has already accomplished for us through Christ Jesus. So I certainly want to remind you to, to come and to be a part of this. So that's Friday night, March the 30th. Uh, we'll be having the foot washing and communion service. Uh, that Saturday morning, we will continue with our weekly uh, Sabbath worship with praise and just celebration. And then that Saturday night, or uh, the beginning of um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we will, we will start with praise and worship and just have a wonderful time in the Lord. Um, so you are certainly welcome to come and to be a part of all of those services, and we look forward to seeing you. Please, when you come, let us know that you're there. Let us know um, that you're there as a result of viewing this, and we want to welcome you. We, we want to make you uh, feel really, really right at home in the midst of the people of God. So in advance, we say thank you. I want to talk a little bit today. I, I've been excited, man. I, I tell you, I've, I've been just grateful for what God is, is doing and uh, just thanking him uh, for the excitement that is just moving among the people of God. Um, it, is, it is just delightful. Uh, we are in a season of anticipation, um, a new beginning according to God's timing. Um, we are looking for our next season, uh, and this next season is going to be better than where we've been, um, what God has prepared for us. We have made the preparations and our anticipation and expectation um, is allowing God to do even greater things than even we can imagine or think. You know, it is important for you to believe God. It's important for you to prepare and to allow your faith to be stretched because that is the mechanism by which uh, God is able to do more. Uh, if you can believe, if you can uh, prepare yourself to receive more than God will do. God will do whatever we believe and can accept. Uh, it is our unbelief, it is our doubt, it is our lack of faith <clears throat> that actually ties God's hand. It is our um, base way of thinking. It is our small-mindedness in many instances 
that keep us from experiencing what God has for us. The Bible says that he is not withholding anything from us. Now, I know in most of the texts, um, they have um, those words that follow are in italics, uh, those that would walk upright and so on and so on. But if you just look at that, that's not what the original text says. It just says he will not withhold anything from us. We are his sons and daughters. We are his children. And so whatever we're not receiving, um, please don't, don't believe that it's God punishing us. Don't believe that it's God uh, exacting some kind of judgment on us. No, no, no. Most of the time, it is our inability to believe. It's our inability in many instances to receive. Some of us are even afraid to be blessed. We're afraid. Uh, to do something greater. We're afraid to, to stretch out and to try something new. Um, we, we, we are just satisfied and content with many, in many instances with just mediocrity. Well, we're believing at Grace that this season, this next season, you notice the springtime, things are starting to bloom. Things, things are starting to happen and new life is showing up. And so um, we're entering into that same type of spiritual climate where new things are going to happen, where uh, we're going to open up and blossom and, and things that have been dormant uh, will now begin to produce life and life abundantly. It should be bright and effervescent and just flowing. That's what we're believing because that's what this season is all about. The reason we can believe it so firmly is because we understand the principles that are taught um, by the feast. We understand um, the truth of God and, and all of those things that he has actually done. And so as a result of that, we were just talking the other night and we were, we were just thinking about how the Passover lamb was slain in Egypt. And as a result of that, they were able to come out and they were on their way to that which God had promised them. And so likewise, we, we understand that while we were yet sinners, while we were in a destitute state, the lamb, Jesus Christ, was, he, he died for us. And as a result of that, we walk into the newness of life. And if you follow the pattern of the feast, then you come out of Passover right into unleavened bread, and that's seven days. And those seven days... And you know, biblical numerology tells you that seven is a number of completeness. And so God uh, admonishes the people of God to practice this, to be reminded of this seven days. What does he say? That this Passover lamb, this that was done to bring you out of bondage was absolutely complete and entire. You need not worry whether it was sufficient enough to do for you what needed to be done. It is absolutely complete. And so as we walk in this, and we were sharing that, as we begin to walk in this, we're reminded of this, this completeness. And this doesn't just happen during this season, but this is fuel for our walk for the entire days for the next year till we come back. And God keeps reminding us of these wonderful things over and over and over and over. Why? Lest we forget. Lest we forget how we got out. Lest we forget uh, what really holds us up. Because every day we're being challenged by the prince of this, of this world, by the God of this world, by the prince of the air, with all of these thoughts that come to try to rob and steal and cheat us out of our destiny and our rightful standing with God. And so we have to be reminded and we have to remember what God has done. And so seven days we are reminded and, and there are things with no leaven. And so we don't have any leaven in our homes and in, in, that represents our bodies. And because we don't have any leaven, um, we don't have anything that puffs us up, no pride, no sin, um, no, no lies, no false doctrine, no bad teaching. We get rid of all of that because those are things that can hinder the real work of God. And so 
We, we practice that. Now, I know it's symbolic, but here is, the, here is what symbols are designed to do. Symbols are designed to reinforce or to teach or to call to your attention some principle that is necessary or um, effective in your life as you move along. Let's just use driving, for instance. When you drive along, if you are a good driver and you've studied, then you know uh, what a stop sign looks like. That's only a symbol. It's usually a octagon type shape sign uh, with red and white on it um, with the letter stop in the middle stuck on a pole. But watch this. That, that sign, that symbol doesn't jump in your car, press on your brake, it doesn't do any of that, but because you understand what the symbol means, it elicits a certain response from you. It empowers you to do something that the symbol implies, and as a result of doing that, listen, y'all, you are safe. It, it, when you follow the instructions that the symbol implies by stopping, Chances are you won't be involved in an accident. You won't run through the stop sign and end up being in some type of collision. Why? Because you understand the symbol. Now, did the symbol, as I said before, did it get in your car and press on the brake? Did it apply uh, any pressure? Did it jump down in front of your car and, and lock your wheels? It did none of that. It stood right where it was. And it is your knowledge and your understanding of what's implied by this symbol that empowers you to stop and to, to safeguard yourself as you move through intersections. Well, so it is with the things that God has given us. Please don't let yourself be deceived. Please don't, don't buy into um, those who may not quite understand it yet. This is not saving you. Just like that sign, that stop sign on that corner, in and in of itself does not save you or prevent you from being involved in a collision. It is your knowledge of this that helps you. It is your understanding and application of what it means that is helpful and beneficial to you. So it is with this. We are saved by our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. After being saved, we are engrafted into his kingdom. Is that not what he says? We are translated out of the darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And if you know anything about a kingdom, a kingdom has a king and it is his rules, his edicts, he has set down the order for his kingdom. So now being in his kingdom, we live in agreement with what is pleasing to him. And Jesus said himself that he did not come to do away with the law and the prophets, the instructions of God, but he came to make them clear, to bring about clarity, to bring about proper interpretation and demonstration of them. Isn't it amazing? that he is himself keeping the Passover celebration? Isn't it amazing that you go through scriptures and you find him at the Feast of Tabernacles? Isn't it amazing that he tells his disciples after the resurrection to go and wait until the day or the Feast of Pentecost has fully come? If he's admonishing this, then certainly we can feel, or I feel, on safe ground by doing it. But again, we've got to gain the understanding and, and, and know what it's really all about. And so here we are, and we thank God for this opportunity. And like I said, we're, we're coming together, and so we want you to come, and we want you to find out about it. Look in your, your Bible. Check out your Bible. It's in there. I don't have a, a unique um, text. I don't have something that you can't find or read for yourself. It is there. And so 
um, the unleavened bread, those seven days. We're, we're going to be celebrating and just having a wonderful time uh, because God has actually uh, taken care of us. And, and, and we know that as we go forward um, that the sacrifice was given and then there is the first fruits. Let me regress just a little bit and talk about that for a moment. The first fruits. Uh, you know in the description of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection that Mary and them come to him and he tells them, he says, don't touch me yet. I have not ascended. I have not been offered up. That is the type of the first fruits. And so here is the good thing. We know that God was pleased with giving his son. We know that God was pleased with the obedience of Jesus, the Messiah. We know that God accepted his sacrifice, his death, took care of all of sin. Wow, that, that is powerful. And this is the kinds of reasonings that we use to make sure that we are doing things in line with what really shows respect and honor for what he did. I just simply came to a place where I could not do things that were not really relevant and did not show the proper respect and integrity for what God did for me through Christ Jesus. So I could not celebrate with some of the fairy tale issues or some of the made up myths or some of the things that were not even found in scripture and just was nothing more um, than the philosophy of men and the dogma that had been handed down throughout the ages and really obstructed the church from being and worshiping God in, as he says, in truth and spirit, in spirit and truth. And you know, there's really no way around it. If something is not true, then it's just false. It's not gray, it's not iffy, it's not sort of, it's either true or it's not true. It's like, Often it's said, you know, there's no sort of pregnant. You either are pregnant or you're not pregnant. And so if these things are not true, we should not be alarmed or, or dismayed because the Father loves us. And as David found out, and I believe it's Psalm 51, he said, you desire truth in our innermost parts. So the idea that somehow when we come to these things and it stretches us and, and, and we start to seek the truth that, oh, we need to be afraid, I don't think so. I think that it's even greater reason to love God, to appreciate him, and it enhances our relationship even the more because it's built on something that is truth and can be substantiated by the scriptures. And I know Everybody has their interpretations and all of those things. And you read all of the books and you go to all of the places. And uh, one person says it's red. One person says it's blue. Another one says it's green. All of them are talking about the same thing. And many times we find ourselves stuck in the middle. What do I do? Who do I believe? What, which one is right? And I think that that's where our heart and our desire to love God and to be pleasing with God opens the door for God, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, to be poured out on us. And then once we're engrafted and, and baptized and immersed in the Holy Spirit and have had that experience of knowing that God's presence has been awakened and dwells in us, then it begins to lead and guide us to all truth. It will help us um, reason through 
uh, the quagmire of information that we find ourselves bombarded with. And so, listen, there's no reason to fear. Do you love God? Are you loving God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your strength? Don't you know that if that is truly the condition that you find yourself in, that the father would be so disingenuous not to honor that. That is what he is looking for. Not trying to be popular, not trying to be religious, uh, not to, trying to be super spiritual, just wanting to love him and to live for him. And so that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're lining up with the feast of the Lord. We're setting ourselves in order with that. And, and so, man, that, that's all been accepted. Um, the death, the lamb has been slain. Paul talks about that to the Corinthian church. He says, let us keep the feast, seeing that Christ, our Passover lamb, has already been slain. Isn't it amazing that this great apostle uses the same symbols, the same signs, the same terminology that we find throughout Scripture. And so uh, we just continue to, to trust him. We continue to believe him and to take him at his word. And God just validates that and proves himself to us. And so um, we're here. And we're going to be having a great time on tomorrow night. As I said, Friday night, come on out. Share with us. Come on out and honor God according to his word. Come on out and begin to walk in the truth and, and just let God uh, prove himself to you. And man, this is going to be a great time for us. I know that many people are looking around and they're saying uh, what destitute time, times we're living in, what, what chaotic conditions we find ourselves in. But those of us, I think that are, are really in tune with the Spirit of God. I think that there is a, a, a great excitement and joy in us uh, because uh, the greater the chaos, uh, the greater the revelation, the greater the glory, the greater the opportunity uh, for the Christ, the greater the opportunity for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And so we're looking forward to seeing you. Come on out, call us, get with us. And so it begins. An epic story of mankind, inspired by real events. Are you ready? And bring restitution and relief. Happen in every dimension, but I am sustaining restitution and relief. And there'll be a case.